more magnificent failures. So if you created a firearm with an almost perfect balance between trajectory, recoil, hitting power, and uh, just general handiness, the world would uh, beat, a, beat a path to your door, right? Maybe not. Welcome to the Yukon in North 61. Today I was going to talk to you about a few other uh, failures. I talked a little bit about the Big Boar 94s and how they sort of failed. And I want to start with Winchester and talk about some other failures. So this is my all-time favorite firearm. Winchester Model 71 in 348 Winchester. So, uh, yeah, that was... Uh, about as good as it gets. 200 grain Hornadays. They shoot so well in the 348 I decided, ah, the heck, I'll just use them. And you know what? He didn't move a step. He went down so fast when he was hit that I thought I missed him. This is original. It shoots a 200 grain bullet at about 2550 feet per second good out to at least 250 yards if you get an accurate one, which this one is. 1935, Winchester started selling these. They discontinued in the 1958 after only selling 70,000. It was considered probably the best lever gun ever made by Winchester. They tried to create a caliber that would be uh, completely useful for open sights. And it was a little expensive and it died to death. 70,000 sales in 23 years. Hardly anybody bought them. Even though it was quite famous as a very useful firearm. Uh, 1955, Winchester came up with the replacement. I don't have a, a Winchester 88, but they came up with a 358 Winchester. This Browning is in 358 Winchester. Very similar ballistics to the 348, and I think they figured that the 348 wasn't selling because you couldn't use it for scopes. So they designed a gun similar to this in the Winchester 88 that you could scope mount. And the 358, uh, just a little bit inferior ballistics, but almost exactly the same. No animal would tell the difference between the two. Easily 250 yards, maybe starts to 300 yards capable. Great woods cartridge. They hardly sold any. Uh, the addition of the scope sight just didn't seem to excite people. And uh, so it seems to be a curse of the mid bore. So in 2005, Winchester came up with a 325 Winchester short magnum. Here it is in a Browning. This is one of my favorite calibers. Uh, you can get 250 grain 8 millimeter bullets. So this gun will shoot very, very heavy bullets, heavier than a 30 caliber. Uh, hardly sold any. So now you got a bolt rifle, scope capable. Maybe it was a curse of levers, but the bolts didn't sell either. There's something about these mid-range calibers that really haven't caught the imagination of people, even though to me, living here in the Yukon, may be the most useful for everything from caribou to moose and bison that you could buy, they just don't seem to sell, except maybe a 338 Winchester is the only one that really caught a fire. Now, if you think this is just a Winchester problem, Remington, in 1964, came up with the Remington 600. And uh, this is a 350 Rem Mag. And this is a humdinger. This will also shoot 250 grain bullets, 2400 feet per second. You can maybe even persuade it up to 2500. That's an 18 and a half inch barrel, 28 ounce action. Uh, we hear all about the Forbes 24 with a 24 ounce, 24 ounce action. Well, this is a super short, handy dog leg bolt, just about as short as a rifle can be, well under 40 inches, uh, just over six pounds. Uh, 300 yard capable, even with 250 grand bullets at 2400 feet per second. Basically it's a 35 Whalen and a tiny little gun. Uh, maybe the best woods combination ever made. Didn't sell. Uh, they changed it. They 
they changed up. When was it? It's 1968. They came up with uh, 660. So they lengthened the barrel to 20 inches. The barrel's a little heavier. Tremendously accurate. Still light. Still handy. This one has a two and a half to eight power loophole with Boone and Crockett's. Uh, I can get that. I can make hits with that just as far as it'll expand bullets, which with 225 grain bullets is probably 400 yards. Uh, didn't sell. And so these mid mid bores just uh, have been disasters. They also tried another round. This is a 6.5 rem mag. I had this rebarrel because I shot out the barrel. Believe it or not, this is a 23 inch barrel. The original barrels were 18 and a half, 20 inches. Not a good idea in a cartridge like this. Which is basically like a 270 improved. Easily a 500 yard cartridge, 600 yard cartridge. That's with 130 grain acubons. Shoots well under an inch with this Packmore Supermatch barrel. Um, again, I've got a Leopold on this with the long range reticle. Easy to make hits out to 600 yards with this rifle. You had guys like P.O. Ackley saying, oh, the action's too short, and what's happening is the bullets are impinging on the powder. Uh, but that thin bullet doesn't impinge much powder, and even the big 35, because the because this cartridge is actually bigger capacity than a 30 odd 6 still got lots of capacity. So why did these fail? It's just the vagaries of the zeitgeist of the time. They just didn't catch the imagination. I don't know why they caught my imagination. Uh, but this 600 has always been one of my 600, 660 series, always one of my favorites. The 348 is my favorite. 358 Winchester I always thought was a neat idea. 325 WSM I think is the best of the Winchester short magnums, but they just didn't catch the imagination of the time.